All right, so in, in this video, I just have one example for you. Uh, it's a problem where we're going to verify an identity. We've done that once already uh, when we were way back here with showing this Pythagorean identity was true. What we have worked on um, a lot yesterday was simplifying trig expressions. And in my opinion, the verifying of, of identities can actually be simpler than... Um, I shouldn't say simpler, uh, maybe a little bit easier than simplifying because we know what we're supposed to get, right? And, and sometimes that can provide a challenge because we might sim try to simplify and then it doesn't match up and we have to figure out how do we get from there to there. Um, but for the most part, we have, a, we have a goal. We have a target. We're simplifying. We're just going to work until we get as nice of a, uh, an expression as we have. Here we have the target. We want to make the left side equal to the right side. Now, why did I say the left side equal to the right side? Um, remember that I said you can pick either side of the expression to work with and make it equal to the other. So why would I pick the left instead of the right? Okay, one of my tips when we're verifying identities is to pick the more complicated side to simplify because it's easier to simplify something and you take something complicated and simplify it than it is to take something simple and make it complicated. Complified, maybe? I don't know. Okay. It's easier to take something complicated and make it simple versus taking something simple and make it complicated. Um, <clears throat> if you go back to our, our simplifying here, all these examples, we had an expression that looked, whoops, um, an expression that looked complicated and it became quite simple, right? Com more complicated, look how simple of, of a thing that became. Um, so I think that's the route that we want to go. Look at that one too. Complicated became simple. Um, so with that, let's look at the left side. I believe that the left side looks more complicated. The right side looks simpler. So let's see if we can simplify the left and make it the right. So. How am I going to do this? Well, we already have just sines and cosines, so I feel pretty good about that. It's the squared here okay, that is, um, I think, making it what's complicated. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to write this out as uh, a squared term here. And we have sine of x plus cosine of x times sine of x plus cosine of x. I didn't quite keep my equal signs in line there. Let me shift this over. There we go. Okay. Now we'll leave the right side alone. I could rewrite it every step, and, and I did that you know, back here where I wrote it every step. You don't have to do that. Um, just leave the other side alone, and then we'll write it in at the end. Okay, so now when I write it out like this, it might help me realize that I can multiply this out. Um, you know, We're used to thinking about the word foil to multiply. We can do that here. So let's take sine times sine is sine squared plus sine times cosine plus cosine times sine. Well, that's the same as sine times cosine, just written in the other order. So what do I really have here? I really have two sine cosines. Plus what do I have here? I have cosine times cosine, which is cosine squared. So I do a step, and when I do that step, then I like to take a peek back at where my, what my target is. What's my goal? And I get excited on this one because what do you notice right here? We have a two sine cosine, and here we have a two sine cosine. So I know that I'm, I must be on the right track here. This is looking really good. And then I say, okay, well, my goal has a one here. And I don't have a one, but I have a sine squared plus cosine squared. And what do we know about sine squared plus cosine squared? That is 1. So I'm going to use my Pythagorean identity to substitute 1 in for sine squared plus cosine squared. And I have 1 plus 2 sine of x cosine of x equals, and now I can just bring this all the way down, 1 plus 2 sine of x cosine of x. And I'll put that check mark that I did it. Okay, I verified that this really is true. The sine of x plus the cosine of x squared really is equal to 1 plus 2 sine of x cosine of x. So verifying identities, try to pick the more complicated side, make it simple, keep those equal signs in, 
in line, work through it, peek, peek up, back at what your target is, see if you can't get there. Okay. Again, this takes works, this takes practice. Um, this is a fairly simple one. Um, over the course of the next week or two, they'll, they'll get a little more complicated, um, but let's practice with some of these simpler ones to begin with. Um, again, it's not about the answer, okay, right? If this is your answer, well, that doesn't really make sense, right? The purpose of this is to show our thinking and show how we can get from one thing to the next. Thanks for watching.